So we've only been doing the marble thing for like two and a half ish weeks, but it feels like forever because I have been dying to release these and you know, get them in your hands. And I'm excited to report that today is one of the last three days of the marble thing so we can do that. And I saved the best two soaps for last for sure, or at least my two favorite soaps for sure. And I'm going to tell you all about the Soprentices favorite of my soaps. My favorite of the Soprentices soaps? Yeah, in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 58 of 365 days of soap. Hi, how are you? If you're new here, hello for the first time. And yeah, today we are doing another Marvel inspired soap, and the mashup that we are doing today is Rocket and Groot. And the Soprentice is doing Rocket and Groot. Which means, you already know, there's gonna be soap dough involved. There's gonna be awesome, like, creating of amazing... It's the Soprentice. She's the resident artist, and it's going to be absolutely epic, for sure. The thing that I don't like about this is, yet again, I cannot remember for the life of me what sense we put in it. But she was very good, and she filmed the sense. So I know what they are. So we can talk about it in the video. So, you know, let's go talk about, I do know they're from Flaming Candle and I do know Flaming Candle has been pretty awesome throughout this entire experience. So let's go see what the scents are, what the soap apprentice does, you know, now in the video, in the soaping part. Oh, I feel like I need snacks for this one. Look at what the soap apprentice is doing. So we, 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 Shut up, I'm not, I'm doing nothing. I am here for the party, just like you guys. The Soprentice is making Rocket. Rocket and Groot. And she's making little, little Rocket soap doughs. Isn't that amazing? She did that. She did that. She just did that damn thing. Uh, come on. I mean, if you've been following me for half a minute, you know that the soap, the soap apprentice has mad soap dough skills. And every time she does stuff, I just love it so much. And I'm always here for all of her creations, but I think this is just beyond. I mean, I don't know that I would really say that it's beyond exactly, because remember when she did those lithops, those succulents, and then those other succulents and what else? Like, she's done so many. She's so good. She's going to do some soap dough surgery with this guy. If you're interested in a soap dough recipe, by the way, I've done a couple of them on the channel. And, you know, they're there. So go check them out. For sure. But she also made little groups. Look at that. That is super adorable. Now, with the scents, we are doing Honolulu Sun for Rocket. And tomato leaf for Groot, both from the flaming candle. And interestingly, when we did the, when we did the blind scent test with Mr. Soap and Clay, we both immediately went, yeah, this smells like dirt. 
for the tomato leaf, but not like dirt, like it smells bad. Like we would have just said it smells like shit if it smelled bad, but like it smells like dirt, like earth, like gardening. And we turned and we both went, that has to be for Groot. And we turned it over and then looked at the cheat sheet. That was Groot. It was Groot and it was perfect. So we definitely got that one for sure. But for the other one, for the Honolulu Sun, we were both, it smells great. It smells like suntan lotion, but we couldn't exactly figure out why I chose that for Rocket. And I think ultimately the reason why I decided to go with that for Rocket is because out of all of them, I think he's the one that just really wants like a break to go hang out on the beach and not be saving the world all of the time. I don't, he's always very begrudgingly into the whole saving the world thing anyway, right Rocket? It's like, okay, I'll do it, but really I just want to get paid, you know? So I don't know. So that, I think that was my thinking, but with that, with this really earthy, very just, God, the tomato leaf is so good. It would be amazing for a gardener soap. It would be, it, it's really, really so clean, so fresh. It's, it's amazing. Paired with that very kind of sweet coconut suntan lotion scent. I'm thinking this is going to be really, really good together. Now, with this soap pour, the soap apprentice is going to be playing around with mixing cold processed soap and melt and pour soap. So actually there's three different types of soap that's going into this, which is, hey, awesome. And one of the reasons why I saved this bar for the last, this is my favorite bar that she made because it's a slab pour, sure, but it's complicated AF. All of the prep work that goes into making all the little soap dough guys, plus soap dough and melt and pour and cold process. So she will be doing a hybrid soap with cold process and melt and pour in the actual body of the soap, which is amazing. So I'm very interested to see, you know, this process play out. Yeah, she wanted to do this because she wanted to make a galaxy. And why does she want to make a galaxy? Well, Mrs. Soap and Clay, the answer to that is obvious because guardians of the galaxy. And that's what they are the Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a thing. It's part of the Marvel cin Cinematic Universe. It's there, look it up, for sure. Weirdly, the first time I watched the first Guardians of the Galaxy, I remember texting the Soprentice or talking to her at the shop. I think I was actually talking to her at the shop and I'm like, so we watched Guardians of the Galaxy last night. And she's like, and you loved it. And I'm like, no, I hated it. And she's like, oh. Oh, okay, why? And she didn't, she, that's the thing about the soap apprentice. She never tries to defend her position, right? She never goes, oh my God, what are you talking about? It was amazing. She just sort of takes a step back and she's like, okay, why? That was, you know, unexpected. And I told her, I'm like, I don't know. I just, the, the soundtrack was weird and the care, whatever. And I don't know, I guess I was just in the wrong headspace because then I watched it again like a year and a half or so later and we had put up, we had just brought a TV out into the front yard to have a little summer movie night or whatever and the kids wanted to watch Guardians of the Galaxy. So I'm like, all right, let's do that. Fine, great. The next two hours of my life are going to be filled with a movie I don't like. But, you know, I mean, I was very actually enthusiastic about it, obviously, but in my mind, this is what I'm thinking. Like you don't just tell your kids, hey, that's a stupid ass idea, but sometimes you think it and that's normal and fine. So, you know, whatever, not the point. Anyway, we started watching and I'm like, this is a really good movie. This is a really good movie. And Mr. Soap and Clay at that point was like, yeah, I, I know. I didn't understand when you said that you didn't like it either, but you know, whatever. And sometimes that's just how I am. It takes a while for me to warm up to things. And not only did I warm up to Guardians of the Galaxy, it ended up being one of my favorite arcs in the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe because I I really enjoy all of the characters. I love the development. I love the banter. I yeah, Chris Pratt, he's very funny. It's just, they're all funny, you know? I, I really like that one guy. Oh, what is his name? The big guy. Oh, it's gonna kill me now. 
he's hilarious. Just the deadpan, not being humorous, like not meaning to be humorous, but therefore it comes across really freaking funny. It's killing me. Whatever. So she's poured some uh, melt and pour into this with her cold process and all of her swirls. Let's check out the pour. Okay, now for a slab pour, as you would expect, it's a pretty short pour because most of the work is done in the back end and you just saw all that. That was all in the prep work. Now, these scents actually did perform very, very well. There was no signs of rising or acceleration or whatever. You're seeing weirdness in the batter because again, it's a hybrid soap and there's melt and pour in with the rest of the soap. So there was about a pound of melt and pour that went into that. There's about 16 ounces that went into this, this soap. So yeah, it's gonna be doing some weird things right now, but you know, pay attention to that for the cut and see if you can see, you know, the melt and pour bits, which are all silvery and sparkly versus the cold process bits with all of it. And you know, cause that's fun, hybrid soaps, Super cool. And I've said it before, the weird things that you can add to soap, it just never ends. It's just, it's, it, it's wild. I mean, adding soap to soap is not exactly revolutionary. That's not weird, but adding melt and pour soap to cold process soap, also not revolutionary, but it can be scary, you know, because there's that whole saponification thing and you want to make sure that that works and things don't separate and oh what do you do with the melt and pour should you put rubbing alcohol on it to make sure it sticks to the cold process no 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 you don't need to do that i mean just think about like the solidified melt and pour embeds that you can easily put into cold process soap with none problems whatsoever right it's the same concept it's just the melt and pour is fluid for this so it'll all be fine for sure and that does look very galaxy-esque, doesn't it? That is just beautiful. I, I'm i wondering if she's gonna like skewer it. I'm kind of hoping that she doesn't because it looks very galaxy-esque right now. She's gonna skewer it, isn't she? She's gonna do the thing. Oh yeah, she's gonna do the thing. But she skewers in such a great way that it's still gonna look galaxy-esque and you know this about the Soap Prentice because she's goals. Oh yeah, it's still perfect. It's great. Now, the longest part of this process is going to be all the things that she's messing around with the soap dough, right? So the creation of the soap dough and all of those groots and all those rockets. And then also, you know, the placement. Because that ends up taking a lot of time, placing things onto, you know, soaps like that. Now, I don't know if I said it, but the groots were not actually made via cold or via soap dough. She did not create those. That was actually a mold that I had bought. It's like a little resin mold that I bought years ago after I had watched Guardians of the Galaxy and decided that I loved it. And I just never got around to using it for anything. I think I had some idea of what I was going to do do with it and then I forgot about it and it went into the mini mold drawer. So it's just a resin thing that I picked up off Etsy and that was it. And I love how he's how she's uh positioning this guy so he's like sitting on essentially Rocket's shoulder. That is very clever, very adorable. I love that. And I love that the majority of the soap dough is pretty flush with the top of the bar because that is actually pretty important, right? When you are working with soap dough and you want to do all this decorative stuff or not even soap dough, just decorations in general, you have to think about the end user and how they're going to use it, right? And so if things are too tall, also how you're going to ship it. Like the elephant nose ones that we did before i was filling orders for those and i'm looking at these elephant trunks and i'm like well what the shit am i supposed to do with this i don't know how to ship this and i you know got creative with that but yeah i mean these are very flush with the surface of the bar so 
easy to ship, nothing's gonna break off, and also it's not so weird that you feel weird using it because it will all just sort of wear down with the rest of the soap. This is a smart idea that she's doing with the sticks to make sure that everything's sort of even. But as you can see, because you actually have the, the dead on view of the soap mold, she does not. She does not have that. She's soaping from the side. So we can see the lines on the side and go, yeah, they're not exactly where they, where you wanted them to be. Oh gosh, almost had a camera fail. That's, that happens all the time too. Yep, for sure. But the, uh, they're not exactly where she put the lines. Like some of them are squarely in the middle of those lines, but it's okay because the soap apprentice totally knows how to fix that in the cut because now she's a slab cutter master, really. Now, this is gonna go ahead and go into the oven for sea pop and gel, just because we wanna play with that melt and pour inside and see what it does. And I don't know, those are gorgeous. They're, look at the little expressions on, on Rocket's face. Like that's just, she did such an amazing job with these. I, I can't wait to see this cut and see what the melt and pour did inside and at the bottom and all the things. And she's, yeah, I don't know. I think she just realized that she might have some problems cutting this. Whatever. Let's go check out this cut because again, she's a she's a slab pro cutter. So, this has been sea popped and gelled overnight and now it is ready to cut. And it looks like she's put some lines in there to help guide her cuts, which is awesome. Here for that for sure. And let's see it up close. See what we got going on. Oh, it's very pretty. It's very pretty. How's the bottom look? Ooh, we've got beautiful stardust going on in there. That is definitely a galaxy-esque soap, I think. Don't you? I think that's great, for sure. And so, going with her original cut lines, as you can tell, I think, if you look at the rest of the, the loaf, she's going to have some problems so she might have to switch some things up. But that soap is definitely galaxy-esque and that is just gorgeous. I love the shimmer that comes through with all of that. I like the difference in sort of texture with everything for between the melt and pour and the cold process. And she's trying something different now. She's gonna cut something off of the top for the right size bar, but now that means that the next bar is gonna be super big, and so is that. I'm interested to see what she does with this, because those two right there are really close together, right? Those four? All right, cool. I love that she's problem solving while she's doing this, for sure, because this is so much a part of first time soapers as you start learning how to cut bars. I mean. I make all this shit look stupidly easy at this point and I just take knives out and cut things, but I'm actually not good with knives. It's just the nature of that. That's a huge bar. Yeah. It's just the nature of having done it so many times that I just, I know how to cut it, you know? And so she's learning this right now and we get to be a part of the learning phase. And I remember when I was just learning how to cut slabs that had like designs on them and obviously when you're a soap maker you want all of your bars to be the same weight and so I have a fair amount of anxiety in my life like it's it comes up for you know things like this like oh god what if I cut this thing wrong and well as you learn over the years it's not wrong it's not the end of the world worst case scenario you sell it as a scratch and dent and you know you still make your money off of it but you have to stop freaking out and also you learn from all these things and she is learning so she is going to to make sure that they all are the same size yeah she's gonna cut a piece off smart way to go so prentice and now somebody gets a beautifully scented little end piece in a bits and bobs bag which is amazing there's always something to do with soap you can always always find a creative use for soap for sure to get it out of your face and out of your shop and all of the things. 
but those soaps are so beautiful. Tell me you don't love those. Tell me it was not the best idea ever to keep these ones for like the end of the Marvel series. I mean, it's not the end end. My bar's next, but my bar isn't next because like I'm saving the literal best for last. I saved the last two bars, one from her and one from me, that I liked the best. And, you know, I think this one probably beats tomorrow's. Maybe not. I don't know. I really love tomorrow's too. But it's perfect to be, you know, ending the Marvel series with, with, you know, Grocket. It's a, uh, it's Rocket. It's Groot. It's suntan lotion and tomato leaf gardening and, it's all of the awesome and all of the beautiful and all of the really hard work by the Soprentis. And it's amazing. It's a galaxy because, you know, they're guardians of the galaxy. That is day 58. So she made a galaxy soap, which was cool in and of itself, right? That is amazing. And then she made Rocket's head. Weren't those the cutest Rockets ever? And then Groot, little baby Groot, like hanging out like on... <sighs> amazing just across the board so beautiful this is why this is one of my favorite bars my favorite of her bars for sure in the line and this is great like i think this one is going to sell out immediately like absolutely because it's just so good she did such a great job the scent blend together yes absolutely delightful really really like it it's very interesting but they've all been interesting and super fun, so I like that. Yes, if you are interested in the Grocket bars, you cannot get them for a couple more days. We have two more. Well, one more soap and then one more finale thing, which is going to be awesome. And you have to wait because that's how we do things around here. But you can find other stuff at soapandclay.com right now, so, you know, go do that. That would be cool. If you're interested in seeing what the final bar is and you're not subscribed, hey, do that thing. Click that button. It's easy. Just click the thing. I would appreciate it a lot. Yes. For those of you who are subscribed and have clicked that button, hey, thank you for having done so. I appreciate you a lot. And that is true each and every day, 100% for sure. I hope you guys had fun today. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for another round of Marvel-inspired soapy fun. Bye.